Okay, good morning, colleagues. Uh, my profound thanks to CICT for bringing us together on this very crucial and critical platform. And uh, definitely, as our DVC has mentioned in her opening remarks, we should embrace this form of technology going forward and not deal and look at it as the word I use, deal in a punitive way. And my presentation uh, focuses on the theoretical as well as the critical engagement with uh, AI and ChatGPT. And the reasons for that are varied because we are since 2023, January, we've experienced an uptake, or as one would say, the first months and marked moments when artificial intelligence became a real issue at UWC and other universities in South Africa. Globally, it's been there for a while. And what is important for us then to understand is the hype surrounding the capabilities of OpenAI's ChatGPT 3, 1, 2, and 3, We've had French universities up in the global north who have banned the use of ChatGPT and other AI tools in January this year. And we at UWC are being quite progressive as we are busy formulating and grappling as we go along by embracing it in a good way. And just like we haven't banned grammar checks and so on, we will embrace AI and move on with it. But we need to be critical in the way in which we move along with this technology, because it will be foregrounded with those who have lots of funding. And they are the ones generally who take and shape the narratives of how we will use artificial intelligence, chat GPT going forward, not only in our modules, but institutionally, as well as in the higher education terrain. In India, Bangalore's university, the RUV also banned students from using ChatGPT, and the university said it would conduct surprise checks on students suspected of using technology. These are very benign and asinine ways in which institutions have decided to, do, to work with the issue of ChatGPT and technology and AI in particular. It should not be so because control and oversight is not how society and democracy should function in a higher education context. Professor Chomsky is on record as commenting that in higher education, ChatGPT is basically a sophisticated high-tech form of plagiarism. I don't think we should necessarily look at it in that way because this actus day or an act of God is not necessarily something that just came and landed with us. It's a product of knowledge. It's a product of our experiences and the development and evolution of us as scholars and thinkers on the globe. So artificial intelligence has been defined as the ability and development of an information technology based computer systems or other machines to complete the tasks that usually require human intelligence and logical deduction. Even though AI can make the world a better place, AI does come with the challenges according to Professor Siao who conducted a study in 2018 on the status of artificial intelligence. Take the example of the driverless vehicles. Driverless vehicles are now the new era of technology and advancement and the augmented reality that we've been using in Eon XR at UWC. We've created and used those tools as well. But while it brings a huge benefit to both industry, creating jobs and so on, there are also other challenges. For example, the usage of that particular product would then mean there are that many more who will go unemployed on the production line. It would also mean reconfiguring higher education universities of technology and their offerings as well, and the impact of our ICS and computer sciences at our universities and at UWC as well. So chat GBT appears to work seamlessly and other flagship products such as Doll E, which can make and take pictures and illustrations that one describes with text and prompts. That was released by the San Francisco-based OpenAI in November 2022. And ChatGPT, as we understand, mimics human conversation and instantly responds to any type into its chat box. It can tell you a joke and it never refers to itself as it or a thing, but it refers to itself as I. So other companies such as Google 
and Facebook have already released their own versions of this enormously powerful technology. And some of us at university have been using it. For example, in the module that I work in, academic literacy, I have uh, picked up students using it in the tasks we've given it to them and individually engaged with them while informing them of the rules when it comes to using materials from elsewhere. Of course, we don't have a developed policy that speaks to AI and this colloquium as a precursor would then set the tone as to how institutionally we will develop those kinds of policies and rules in an ethical and in a very uh, engaged way that would enable learning and teaching to take place at UWC. Of course, the creators wanted to revolutionize the way in which we work and communicate. And artificial intelligence then would then make machines smarter, some think, than humans, especially those that critique it, like Dr. Perenko and others. So when we look at the missions of these companies that have developed chat GPTs and other forms of artificial intelligence to be used in higher education, it has a profit motive. Some of our erstwhile uh, scientists on the continent are very critical of what has been developed with regards to <clears throat> artificial intelligence. In particular, Timnit Gebru, she stated in May 2023 this year, it is a god they are trying to build. But we should understand where she is coming from, because whose work on bias and the internet algorithms that are formed with this chat GPT software that's been part of it. Remember, AI doesn't think for itself. It's an amalgamation of information in a software form that then responds to questions that are posed to it. In other words, it hyper per millisecond configures uh, different kinds of streams of educational content and material, and then it gives you a response. Her co a publication that came out as a critique of Google's artificial intelligence when she challenged the ethics of it and the preoccupation by intelligence of the software, if anything is to go by, she then was dismissed together with her other colleagues because she questioned the issues of whether or not it is the profit that trumps what should be more focusing with us with regards to the benefits in terms of learning, developing, and so on. Programs like ChatGPT are trained on vast amount of human words and conversation, and much of it is scrapped without consent or respect for copyright, not only from the inter internet and intellectual property theft, but also from an ethical and moral perspective when it comes with the North and South relations, as uh, Dr. Juliet Stolten come alluded to earlier. So we got to understand that even though we look at these vast data sets in a way which to our human eyes makes us feel as though this AI has its own intelligence. But the software, remember, is not thinking. It merely regurgitates data on which it has been trained. And its answers are entirely dependent on the content of that data, although it has a tendency to invent false answers, which its creators use the human experience and they ascribe it to as human beings have hallucinations. They call that with the AI as well. The scientist Gebru had detected much of her in her career, highlighting the risks posed by this new software. Besides co-authoring and writing a paper in 2020, which as I mentioned, cost her a job. She identified three key issues. One was the environmental impact and the energy used to train ChatGPT with a huge data set of human language just once could power 12,000 homes in Johannesburg for a month. And yes, it does have an impact. I know I was eager at the beginning of this academic year to use augmented reality and the experiences from Eon XR. And when I entered the lecture venue in a venue that should have had power, there was no power. It continued for a while in term one and whatever augmented reality I wanted to incorporate in my academic literacy module, it put paid to that. I look forward to picking it up going forward in the next semester, provided we have power in venues and so on, and going forward into 2024. The second yeah. thing to point minutes, out to us, yeah, thank you, I'll be concluding soon. She identified the potential for inherent biases and discrimination 
and data that is racist and sexist, as much of the internet and its outputs will be too. So the potential for such mod models to deceive users is very real. So the imperative then for African scholars is to take ownership and to develop this artificial intelligence as we go forward. So what then can be some of the things we can do at UWC? We can develop with an ethical consideration our policy, look at the legal challenges as well, plagiarism, developing critical AI literacy for students, as Professor Grayson had pointed out, using generated text in assignments which require students to demonstrate critical thinking in working with the context. ChatGPT can be used to assist learning and not act as a substitute for human creativity. The use of generative AI like ChatGPT should be aligned with the goals of learning and teaching as UP is currently doing. So what are the statuses at all of our higher learning institutions besides UWC? Stellenbosch University, UP, WITS, UJ, NMMU have all been busy developing policy as well as working with the chat GPTs in their different modules and so on. The CAR Center established in 2015 at UP has done a lot of work as well. So colleagues, CICT together with the rest of us should take the lead so that we can then provide an alternative for the UWC context. Thank you very much, colleagues.